Okay, so then the other kind of major thing we talked about was uh, black body radiation. So a review of these concepts. Uh, black body radiation is uh, radiation is emitted, uh, emitted by this ideal surface that we call a black body. Uh, the amount of radiation and its spectral uh, characteristics are a function of uh, temperature, right? So the higher the temperature, the more the black body uh, radiation curve sort of shifts into small wavelength, uh, high frequency. Um, so you, you know, think the sun is emitting in the visible spectrum, that's a, a short wavelength. We are emitting in the long spectrum in the thermal uh, region, long wavelength, right? The, the uh, peak radiation, that is the, the, the highest probability of a wavelength coming out of an emitting surface is related to um, this uh, law called Wien's law, right, which is shown here. So if this is lambda max, so that is the wavelength at which the radiation is uh, its maximum value, times the temperature of that surface is a constant, and it's uh, 2898. Okay. Uh, total black body emissive power, this is just the integral of the uh, spectral black body emissive power. Uh, and for a black body, it's equal to sigma t to the fourth. Right? So this is where that, the whole radiation rate equation comes from. All right. So we can um, do some analysis with black bodies if we are interested in just looking at one region in the spectrum. Um, so, the, the, so the curve for uh, black body radiation is given by Planck's law. That's this equation up here. So this tells you the amount of radiation emitted at a given wavelength and at a given temperature. Right? So this is the equation you'd use. If you want to know, like, okay, I have a temperature, but I want to know how much is emitted in this wavelength band, we can do that with this thing called external fractional function. Um, here it's called E's uh, black body function, external fractional function. And what you do is you take the product of the wavelength that you want. So uh, the, say you want to have, uh, you know, look at, at the amount emitted between zero and a thousand micron or something like that. You multiply that 1,000 micron by the temperature of the surface, and that gives you this combined value. That combined value, maybe that's 10,000. You plug that into this chart, and you'd see, all right, 90%. Yeah, question. Uh, since we can't use this function on the exam, like what would a question, how would a question test that? Sure, so uh, the question was, how would you test this on the exam? I would give you the fractional function plot. Right? It's like if I asked you to uh, evaluate the fra external fractional function, I would give you this plot, this thing here. Right? So again, what you'd want to do is you take the wavelength that you want, you take the temperature, multiply them together, put it in there, and then you just have to pull off you know, your value here, and maybe you're subtracting off another value here, and you're interested in the difference between those two things. Is that clear? Okay. So our external fractional function has this definition down here, right? This is um, not something that you'd really have to evaluate because that integral is really difficult. It's just plotted out graphically here and that's where you would use it. Okay. Um, all right, let's see. So then radiation exchange between black surfaces, you know, we're, we, the first concepts there are about like how a, a single black surface emits now maybe we care about <clears throat> radiation exchange. So there's a couple things in that we have to think about in radiation exchange. One is how much does one surface see another surface? Um, so we call that the view factor. A view factor is a value between zero and one. Uh, and that is representing the amount of light that it, if it leaves surface one, hits surface two. All right, so just remember for, for view factors, we're talking about the entire surface it's emitting. So if you have like, uh, you know, a cylinder, just think of me sit standing here, right? I'm roughly a cylinder, and we're worried about the view factor from me to the window back there, right? It's not like we're taking just the front area, the projected area, whatever. It's the total area that's emitting. So it's going to be the full circumference of the cylinder and all surfaces around it. Right, so the view factor is the entire field of view for the emitting surface um, and the fraction that goes to a specific surface that you want. There are a number of ways that we can evaluate view factors. We went through all these um, 
inspection. Inspection is you look at the problem, it's obvious from the geometry, or it can be deduced from the geometry what the view factor is. Uh, yeah, question? Yeah, okay, so that's a good question. What would, what, in which scenarios would you only account for part of the area? So let's look at this example that's just plotted up here, shown, shown up here. So in this case, let's say we have a cylinder, we're worried about um, <clears throat> the radiation exchange between this surface and this surface. If we're told in the problem that um, like the, the surface is um, adiabatic or that there's sort of no radiation occurring from the back of the cylinder. In that case, then we would say, okay, my view factor is the inside of the cylinder to this little uh, plate on the bottom, and the view, you have to go to the library for that. Um, that's usually what you do. So usually you're, you're worried about some kind of an enclosure or virtual enclosure, and you're looking at radiation exchange in, in those surfaces. It'd have to be some kind of a special circumstance where you would want to include like the outer wall, right? It's almost like a separate problem, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so we, we said uh, inspection is one way. Again, for inspection, what you're doing is you, you kind of have to prove somehow that like the, the geometry requires that it's going to be some, uh, some view factor. Uh, you don't want to just convince yourself that it's by inspection this value, and in fact it's not. Uh, so be careful with that one, but, but that can be useful. The second is using these set of rules. Okay, so the rules are the enclosure rule. The enclosure, enclosure rule says if, uh, if one surface is emitting inside an enclosure, then if you sum up the view factors from that one surface to all other surfaces in the enclosure, they all have to add up to one. Okay? It's just an energy balance. It's saying I'm, so the energy is leaving and it has to be accounted for. Okay? Uh, so just sort of a definition of view factors, they all, for an enclosure, have to add up to one. Again, for an enclosure, you can construct some virtual surface. And if that, that virtual surface, which doesn't really exist, uh, accounts for the uh, specific fraction, that counts towards that total of one. Uh, <clears throat> reciprocity is the next one. This one is, is is almost always used, it should be used. Once you've computed the view factor from say, this surface here, one, to surface two, like say this is uh, a library function like you get from ease, uh, you compute F one to two, you don't need to compute F two to one, right? You don't need to go find another separate relationship that computes two to one. All you need to know is the areas of those two surfaces and one of the view factors and you can flip it and, and get the other view factor. All right, so reciprocity is a really useful one. Consolidation is just saying you have uh, two surfaces. If you know the view factor to the total area, you can uh, split it up. Uh, or, or if you know the, the view factor to constitu constituent areas, you can add them together. All right, uh, symmetry, if you know uh, one case and you have a symmetric, it's going to be uh, the same. And then the cross strings method is given by this. Don't forget that this is area times view factor is equal to this. So don't, like, don't forget about this area part of it here, all right, if you're asked to use that. The last category here is what I call analysis. Uh, here you go to a table in a textbook, something like this, a view factor library and ease, or you do uh, ray tracing to evaluate. <clears throat> 